I want to show you a quicker and easier way of creating and managing and navigating camera shots in Blender 2.8 using this add-on I created called Shotlist, which you can find the download link uh, in the video description. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you a trick. Okay, so let's get started. I'll go to solid mode, and this is what I have now. Basically, two cameras or two shots. I call them wide shot for this wide shot here. And this is the close up of the monkey, Suzanne. But you can call them whatever you want. These are just conventions in the cinematography world. And basically, I want to add a POV of this monkey. We want to see what the monkey is looking at. So if I open the panel here, shot list, we have a couple of options. We have new shot, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can also jump between the shots. You can see that this starts at frame 27. This starts at frame 1. And if we can expand this a little bit, uh, we have camera and duration. This is pretty handy. And you can actually change the camera here as well, you know, after creating the shot. So it's pretty cool. And you can go to next shot, previous shot. It wraps around. So you, when you get to the end, it goes back to the beginning can delete shots over here. Anyway, so these options here, this is show camera name. So it's pretty straightforward. If you look in the lower left of the camera, you see WS, that's the name of the camera. You see how it changes and the active camera changes. So you can disable that, but it's pretty handy. So it's enabled by default. We also have this hide inactive cameras. And this is pretty interesting if we don't, have that enabled. You see that I have two cameras and both of them are visible all the time. So that's really annoying. I have a close up. I want to place it at the same exact spot, just change the lens and but it, it's getting in the way. So hide inactive cameras only shows the active camera. Now I advise you when you're creating cameras uh, and shots that it's handy to have all of them and you see they have their names here as well, but not when you're actually looking through the camera. You can also remove all the shots and you can lock the shots so you don't accidentally remove any of them or, you know, change the settings, but you can still navigate, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's create the reverse shot. Let's see what the character is looking at. I'll disable hide and active cameras just so we can see all the cameras. And I'll create a new camera and let's rename that to POV, point of view, monkey. Cool. And let's go to, let's see when you get this shot, and that shot and stops and then maybe 72. Yeah. And then we add the shot. Let's name this 1B and add the shot. So if we go to camera view now, that's the third shot. Now that we have the shot, let's hide in active cameras. And we can go here, lock camera to view and position it. Now we see what he's seeing. Let's feel what he's feeling, you know, I would say. Cool. Let's take a look. Yeah, it kind of works. Actually, let me just, you know, the cool thing about it is that it also selects whatever camera automatically. You see how it's changing here? It's very easy to just scroll through the timeline or navigate through the shots over here. And immediately you can start changing the settings here. So let's, let's do a, what's this, 75? Well, yeah, let's do a 50. And let me just do it. So actually, I want a 35 millimeter full frame camera. That's what I'm using. Um, it's OK. So this is the 50 millimeter. Um, just naming. It's a good practice. Um, so you don't get lost. Cool. Now, there's nothing here, right? <laughs> so I didn't prepare a cool scene. But let's 
do something about it. Let's create something very quickly, very basic. Let's whoop and whoop and then almost there and to zero and merge by distance. There we go. So, whoop, nice. Let's just so you know, there's something interesting to look at. <laughs> As if the character was actually looking at something. Well, let's select all of that. Good. Yeah, not great, but you know, adjust this very quickly. And we're good to go. Let's see. You know, some cool background music. Yeah. By the way, this is really cool. I have three cameras here and they're all bound to the shots already. But what I want to do is fly over. And something interesting I found out is that you can record all three shots in sequence. So start recording, play and fly. And now look at what happens. Blender switch automatically. Look at that. Yeah, man, this is really cool. So, so this is really, really cool, man. Because look at that. You know, you set your shots, different lenses, different settings, and boom. You just fly. And it records the movement. Bingo. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how to add some organic movement to the camera. So you can see that it's not perfectly linear. It's unstable to some degree. It's like breathing a little bit. You see, there's a little bump. So when you're doing a dolly shot like this in real life, it's actually people operating these things and the camera is in a tripod and there's a camera operator. And so sometimes there's a little bump then just to make it a little more organic, uh, I like to add those variations like we do in real life. So, yeah, it, this is exaggerated to show the effect. But, you know, if you add a little bit, it's one of those things that if you don't add, it looks fake. You know, you don't see it. You feel it. If it's not there, you feel it's artificial. It's too perfect. Okay, so let's do one. To exemplify, let's do one here. So we, whoops. Let's open another graph editor. So it's pretty, pretty easy actually. I'll just do a shot here first. We do location and let's do rotation as well. Yeah, because we need rotation. And then right before the next shot, we add another keyframe like that and like that. So we have a nice dolly shot. Uh, let me set both to linear. So you see how the previous shot is moving and it stops. You know, previously this shot was static, so it makes sense. But now that this is moving, it feels jarring to cut from, you know, a static shot to a moving shot. So what we can do is move this shot over here so it starts earlier. But we just need to, you know, move the keyframes over here. So, yeah. Ooh. Even earlier, more like over here. There we go. And you see how the hide inactive cameras is working in our favor here because you can only see the keyframes for the active camera. So this is really cool. It speeds things up for you. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I mean, I would go a couple frames earlier. Looking good. Look at that. Yeah, it's too fast. So let's move this over here. And Okay, so let's just do this one. So what I can do is, you know, go to properties here. This is in the graph editor. Um, and then we can actually expand this and we only need rotation. Open the properties panel here, 
expand this or by pressing shortcut N and modifiers, property selected, you know, X rotation and noise. So at first it's extreme, it's crazy. So, you know, strength, this is strength. We just reduce that. I usually do 0 0.01. Yeah, but its scale is too small. We need to increase this to something like 9, 8, 10. You see, now it's way less frequent. So there's a bump here, a bump there, but it's not like shaking like crazy. Yeah, yeah, feels good and to me. And then we can experiment. So that's it. I hope you've learned something. Hopefully some new tricks. Hopefully improving your camera animation shots creation process in Blender. I made this atom for myself years ago. Actually, it was a much simpler version than this. And I got excited about Blender 2.8, started using it again and doing some cool stuff. And I figured some people might find this useful as well. Now, the atom is not free, but all the concepts uh, I talked about here, quite universal. This is just much better for daily use, you know, so you can manage your shots, especially if you have like many shots, you know. I would appreciate if you check it out and I see you next time. Bye bye.